Hello and welcome to Point of View. After years of delays, Boeing has finally launched two NASA astronauts to the International Space Station on its Starliner spacecraft. The launch of Boeing CST's 100 Starliner marks not just the first time the spacecraft has carried astronauts, but also the first crewed launch of the Atlas V, a vehicle approaching its retirement. The capsule lifted off atop an Atlas V rocket at Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Astronauts Barry Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams are piloting the Starliner on its inaugural crewed flight, a crucial final test before NASA can authorize Boeing to conduct routine flights to and from the space station for the agency. The stakes are high. Not only is the CFT mission marks the 100th flight of the Atlas V, it also marks the first time the rocket has carried astronauts making it Boeing's first launch with humans aboard its spaceship. If successful, the flight will enable Boeing to challenge the dominance held by Elon Musk's SpaceX, which has been ferrying NASA astronauts to and from the orbiting outpost since 2020. Both companies' spacecraft were developed under NASA's commercial crew program, which was established after its space shuttle fleet was retired in 2011. The goal is to incentivize and help fund the creation of new, commercially built vehicles capable of flying to and from low Earth orbit. At a pre-flight briefing last week, astronaut Wilmore said safety is paramount and that previous Starliner launch attempts, both uncrewed and crewed, were delayed because the capsule simply was not ready until now. Still, there are inherent risks with any new spacecraft or rocket. The plan is for the astronauts to dock with the space station the following day and spend about a week there before returning to Earth and touching down at Starliner's primary landing site in New Mexico's White Sands Missile Range. While NASA astronauts have for years been flying aboard the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, the agency does not want to rely on a single company. Having that second option is really important because it adds redundancy and resiliency. In space systems, there are always redundancies, because if something goes wrong, they want to make sure that they have backups. Boeing's journey to this first crewed flight has been turbulent. In 2019, the Starliner's uncrewed debut was cut short after software glitches prevented the capsule from attempting to dock at the space station. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition. And liftoff of Starliner and Atlas V carrying two American heroes, drawing a line to the stars for all of us. Commander Butch Wilmer there. Calling down to Mission Control here in Houston that the spacecraft has begun rolling into the right attitude for its ascent. The guidance, navigation, and control officer here in the room seeing good data on that. Subsequent fuel valve issues caused multiple delays before Boeing was able to successfully demonstrate in 2022 that the Starliner could indeed dock to the International Space Station and return to Earth safely. Earlier this year, Boeing's aviation arm came under fire after a panel blew out mid-flight on one of its 737 MAX 9 airplanes. That major mishap increased scrutiny of the entire company, and it likely raised the stakes for the first Starliner crewed flight. United Launch Alliance made some changes to the rocket to make it safer for astronauts. They added a special system that can detect problems during launch and trigger an emergency escape if needed. This version of the Atlas V rocket also has a different upper stage called Centaur, which has two engines instead of one. This setup is similar to what they've used before and will be used on their new Vulcan rocket. Certifying the Atlas V to carry NASA astronauts, though, required extensive work including nearly 12,000 individual verifications of vehicle components and processes. After CFT, Boeing has a contract with NASA for six operational Starliner flights, all launching on Atlas V. ULA, though, is no longer selling the Atlas V as it works to shift to the Vulcan Centaur, 
meaning any additional Starliner missions, for NASA or other customers, would need to move to another rocket-like Vulcan. Much of the hardware between Atlas and Vulcan is common, with the switch from kerosene-fueled Road 180 engines to methane-fueled BEF for engines being the biggest change. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. LV Sept confirmed. Good LV Sept. And now that Starliner has separated from this Centaur upper stage, we have a big thank you to our partners at ULA uh, for providing Butch and Sunny a smooth ride uh, to space. That is not the end of today's uh, orbit activity, though. The team will now be getting ready for the orbital insertion burn, which comes 31 minutes after flight. So that's still about 15 minutes away now. Um, Sunny Williams and uh, Bitch Wilmore will be uh, getting their tablets out and doing a few other activities to get uh, Starliner ready for that. Uh, and that will be one of the, uh, that will be the first in a series of burns that will set Starliner on its way to the International Space Station.